Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. going to be playing gospel music sort of in a memory for these nine dead souls killed by this ghoul, this monster. I don't know if you've ever been in a all-black well, church where gospel music is played. I have. I've never forgotten it as long as I live. I never will forget it. They're the bedrock of the African-American community, and their heart was cut out by this monster. Their, their heart was just ripped out by this monster. And so who do you blame? Oh, there's a lot of blame to go around. A lot of blame. Let's start with liberalism, which has stripped America of right from wrong. Remember the Ten Commandments used to be in the schools? Can you believe that? Do you know that when I was a kid, there used to be the Ten Commandments in a, in a public school? Thou shalt not kill? At least it told you right from wrong. Red light, green light, no more. Hey, you're born a boy, you want to be a girl? Go ahead, go for it. That's not amoral. In fact, anyone who criticizes it is a bigot. That's liberalism. You don't think it has ramifications, do you? Well, it does, damn it. Don't tell me I don't see it for what it is. And the hatred being imposed upon the people in this country by this criminal government flooding America with criminals, rapists, murderers, thieves. You think it isn't affecting people and driving them crazy? You think because that phony, that fundraising fraud smile so much it's not affecting tens of millions of people who are ready to snap oh there's a lot of blame to go around you can point your fingers at the confederate flag you can point your fingers at the apartheid patches i never heard of them i don't know where he got them from i have no idea you can point your fingers at the ama who dispensed drugs like kool-aid you can point your fingers at the father who gave this kid a gun you can point it at anyone you want but at the core of it it's the hollowing out of America's soul by the disease, the mental illness that Hillary Clinton represents called liberalism. And make no mistake about it, she's marching with the liberal flag, defending illegals who are overrunning our every institution. Meanwhile, in Europe, they're building walls. In Europe, they're saying no more. In Europe, they're saying get them the hell out of here. In Europe, they're saying we still have a border, a language, and a culture, and they can go to hell. That's what they're doing in Europe, liberal Europe that Obama refers to every day in every way. Oh, there's no shootings like this in Europe. There aren't? Oh, no, there aren't. Huh? How, what about happened up in Norway a few years ago? You forgot that one? When that guy went insane and killed all those kids at a camp? Do you remember that tragedy? Oh, it happens in Europe. Oh, it happens in Europe, Mr. Obama. But right now the Europeans have had enough of being overrun by Muslims, by Africans, they don't want it anymore. They're losing their identity, and they don't want it, and they're fighting back. Central European states are fighting back. They're fighting against the corrupt, degenerate European Union. Record gains for anti-immigrant party and Danish vote. Top of the Drudge Report. Greek island swamped by refugees. Mexico now deporting more immigrants than the USA. How come Mexico, which dumps their garbage on us, how come Mexico doesn't want immigrants from Guatemala? Why? How come Mexico deports El Salvadorans, Hondurans, and, uh, and, and such? How come they deport them? I thought they're telling us to take the people that they can't take care of, and they throw them on, on us and tell us that we're racist? Are you kidding me? Meanwhile, Zuckerberg, the devil, Zuckerberg, that phony, only wants cheap foreign labor, as does Microsoft, as does every company in America. There's a lot of blame to go around for the madness in this country right now. But all the blame goes to the top. The Obama administration is giving tips to illegals on getting work permits. They're destroying our borders, language, and culture. And don't think people aren't snapping. You say, wait a minute, Savage, what does this have to do 
with the shooting in, in uh, Charleston. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Thought I'd bring it up, though. Thought I'd bring it up, though. Thought I'd bring it up. You don't like my rhetoric? Too damn bad. I represent America, not Hillary Clinton. She represents a bunch of phony bankers and banksters. And she claims she's one of the regular people. Are you kidding me? She represents the worst evil the country could ever imagine. My friends, we are at the end of the road here. Either we defend this nation or we lose this nation. You know what that means, don't you? It doesn't mean go out and shoot anybody. It means speak out and be heard. Or you'll be overrun like you don't exist. How do you feel about my opinion? I told you that the black church is the bedrock of the African-American community, in case you missed it. I told you that the Christian African-American practitioner is the only hope for the African-American community. What I'm astounded by is that the so-called conservatives in the media who keep talking about family values and keep talking about the black family having been disintegrated by liberalism, father being replaced by government, haven't gotten this, how they don't understand what was killed here. This was an attack upon the last vestiges of hope for the African-American community. Do you understand what this is symbolically? Do you understand how heartbreaking this is for everyone in the United States of America? Doesn't matter what your race is. I mean, your heart should be ripped out by this. I couldn't sleep last night. I was intimidated by my emotions. I frankly was intimidated to go on the radio today for fear that I wouldn't be able to control uh, this show to say what I really wanted to say. But guess what? I'm in total control. I feel that I've said exactly what I wanted to say perfectly on the Savage Nation, and I didn't miss a beat. Oh, by the way, what's wrong with carrying a weapon into a church? Why shouldn't parishioners now be forewarned, whether it's another punk like this or someone who hates Christians as they are doing in the Middle East? Why shouldn't you be armed to protect yourself and your family? You understand now that uh, the church is no longer a sanctuary in America. Everything is, the doors have been kicked down everywhere. There's no sanctuary in America. Liberalism has broken the doors of every sanctuary in the country. They have polluted everything with filth. They have broken the minds of our youth with drugs. They have broken the soul of America with their pornography. And they've broken America with their disrespect for God and the family and the flag, by the way. Will you be in church this Sunday? Does this rattle your faith? Does this rattle your faith in any way? Now, some of you understand how dangerous the world is in which we live. You have the Southern Christian, whatever that group, now I assume the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, which in my opinion is a terrorist organization. In my opinion, if we had a true Republican administration, they would investigate the amount of money that the SPLC has shaken down from groups they hate. And they would go after them to see why they have stirred up such race hatred in the country. You want to look at haters in the country? Look no further than the Southern Poverty Law Center and take a look at the things they've stolen from people under the guise of liberalism. That's one man's opinion, of course. I know many of you have a lot to say about this, just as the president immediately went after guns and gave a boohoo face, uh, pretending he was so saddened by this shooting and... North Carolina, South Carolina, Charleston, just so saddened by it. And then he dashed off on Air Force One where he had a happy face as he raised money in Beverly Hills. Sad face, happy face, happy face, sad face. Yes, a man for all seasons. Meanwhile, the first lady and the first daughters are having a shopping trip in Italy, courtesy of the U.S. taxpayer. One of the first daughters is wearing ripped jeans as she gets off Air Force One. What a great image it is for America. And we're not allowed to say anything. The king has no clothes. The king's family has no protocol. We're not supposed to notice that. And we don't have to say a word about the mother-in-law and the daughters flying around on a shopping trip in Italy. Can you believe this? Can you believe what we're living through? I want to talk about the loss of human life. I want to talk about how this piece of garbage, coward, vermin from hell took away nine lives, the best of the African-American community. And make no mistake about it, the Christian African-American community is the bedrock. It's the spine of the African-American community. 
It is the only hope for the African-American community. And this coward chose to kill nine of them. The coward was a racist. The coward was a segregationist. The coward was a sicko. Why didn't the coward, the brave coward, go into, let us say, a neighborhood in Baltimore run by the Crips and Bloods and express his rage there? Could it be because he would have been killed instantly? Of course. So he chose a church, a church group, the best of the African-American community, wiped off the planet in the United States of America in 2015. Christians killed in the United States of America in a church, not in Syria, not in Iraq, but in the United States of America in 2015. To me, it's an act of terrorism. I know many of you don't want to hear that because you've come to think that only Muslims can commit terror, which is largely true around the world. But here we have an atheist committing an act of terror, a brainwashed atheist, an atheist whose soul was destroyed in the public schools, destroyed by the American Medical Association, an atheist whose soul was annihilated by drugs, drug-related offenses, dropped in and out of school. This child was raised without Christian values. He was raised with no values whatsoever. He was raised on the liberal credo, the credo of Obama and Hillary Clinton, which is do what you feel like doing, that there is no Christianity. If it feels good, do it. You want to engage in sex? Go ahead. You want to be a woman while you're a man? Go ahead. You want to use drugs? Go ahead. You don't feel good? Pop a pill. You don't feel good? Go to your crackpot with a stethoscope and it'll give you some drugs. You see, all Christian values have been driven out of the schools and the culture by the liberals. They've been replaced with a vacuum. Do as you please. Do whatever you want. So it's not only about racism here. It's about the anti-Christian drug, sex, and rock and roll culture that has turned some of our youth into robots. Robots, social pathologues, sheeple with no values. Some of them monsters who have no values except to destroy others. And yet there's the issue of the father who gave him a gun, allegedly. Now, you know it's a felony to give a gun to someone who has been arrested and has a criminal record. That's a story unto itself. The doctor should be investigated for having given him drugs. Dangerous drugs. Dangerous drugs. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from. SwissAmerica.com. But we're talking about the devil who killed those innocent black people. And I'm relating it to the Charles Manson theory of Helter Skelter to start a race war in America because this punk said that he wanted to start a civil war. Do you know that or not? That's been left out of all of the news reports, except one. He's the Charles Manson of our time. Only he's committed a, a crime, uh, murders worse than what Manson did. I'm surprised no one in the media has noticed this. I'm sure it'll be on Fox and Friends before it leaves my mouth. And I'm sure the leg crosses will have it by tonight. I'm positive Martha Washington will make reference to it, ripping me off as usual. But okay, doesn't matter what people do. As Lao Tzu said, it doesn't matter who rips your ideas off as long as your ideas are used. I am telling you, this guy is the Charles Manson of our time. It's like history repeating itself. It's the scenario that Charles Manson wanted to start a race war, which he called Helter Skelter, which was committing these horrible murders in the Hollywood Hills and then blaming it on blacks. And then there would be a murderous rampage against blacks by frightened whites. Well, now it's the reverse. And we're all fearing a murderous rampage against whites by blacks to provoke an internecine war of near extermination. That's what we could have happen here in this country right now. Make no mistake about it. You may think it's behind us. You're mistaken. Oh, I wish I could sit here like a Pollyanna and say it's going to be forgotten. It won't be forgotten. It won't be forgotten. And by the way, it shouldn't be forgotten. I didn't say that there should be murders in reaction to the murders. No, but I said it will not be forgotten, nor should it not be forgotten. These were the bedrock of the African-American community. They were the bedrock, the granite, part of the granite of America. Granite is a multicolored stone. Granite, look at granite. Gray, black, white, right? That's granite. They were part of the granite of America. And this 
this this subhuman blew away a big portion of the granite of this country. It's not going to heal so quickly. Don't fool yourself. You may think it's in the news cycle and it's over. But I don't live with the memory of a, of a goldfish. I grew up in another generation. And I don't think everyone in this country has the mindset of a millennial who's already moved on to uh, to something else. So who do you blame? Uh, everyone's got someone to blame. Harvey Weinstein, Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, Spielberg. Violence, 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 violence. And then preaching about peace. Don't you just love it? Don't you just love it? Sean Penn, Mr. Peacenik, Mr. Anti-Gun does his last bomb called Gunman, waving a gun around, that impotent fool, running around with a, a psycho actress to show how potent he is. It's so patently clear to me how sick these people are. And don't think they're not the devils. They are. And don't think they have nothing to do with this violence. They do. Okay, yes, then there's politics. Some will blame conservatives, some will blame liberals, some will blame this one, some will blame that one. Fingers will point in all directions. That's exactly what Charles Manson wanted. And that's exactly what this punk wanted. Make no mistake about it. Now, will cool heads prevail? I hope so. I would put a restraining order on Al Sharpton. I wouldn't let him cross state lines to incite a riot. I mean, if President Obama really wanted to stop repercussions from this tragedy... This, I would say, this Holocaust against the black community really is what it is. Nine in one church? Wow. If Obama really wanted to stop it, if Attorney General Lynch wanted to stop it, they would put a restraining order on Al Sharpton and all the other race baiters who went to Ferguson and went to Baltimore. And they can do it. There's a federal law in the books, by the way, that would prevent those troublemakers from crossing state lines to incite a riot. She could do it. Let's see if she's real. Let's see how real Loretta Lynch is in preventing these troublemakers from crossing state lines to start a riot in South Carolina. That's all she has to do is say, hey, I'm attorney general. No one's coming from out of state to start a riot in this state. And if you show up anywhere near it, we're going to arrest you under a federal anti-riot statute, which exists, by the way. It was passed in the 60s to stop this from happening. I haven't heard Lorraine Lynch say that, strangely enough. I haven't heard Obama mention it. He dashed off to a fundraiser with the important people from Hollywood about the fake black quitting as head of the NAACP in Spokane. And that's a huge story. And you've got to read her resignation letter to see what a devout revolutionary she really is and how she really was using race as a weapon against the middle class, as does, as do most civil rights organizations. They use their race as a weapon against innocent people, in my estimation. The big story for most of you, though, is the... Uh, uh, the issue of GMOs. Many of you are freak, freaked out over GMOs. You don't even know what they are. You have no background whatsoever in science, and yet you're panicked into thinking that GMOs are unsafe. What you don't know is that the supporters and partners who are involved in the $500 million a year PR campaign against GMOs reads like a directory of European church and government-sponsored social justice and development groups, the very same groups who are promoting the global warming lie, are promoting the lie about GMOs. And I will prove it to you. Patrick Moore, one of the founders of Greenpeace in the 1970s, a bona fide true environmentalist, quit Greenpeace and now works to expose Greenpeace's actions in the developing world. And he has joined with Golden Rice inventor Ingo Potricus, in calling for putting Greenpeace on trial for crimes against humanity. Did you hear me? There are other humanitarian and environmental groups that have come to recognize the important role biotech can play in alleviating human suffering and spurring development. Two of them are Oxfam and Nature Conservancy. They were initially opposed to GMOs, but in the light of overwhelming scientific confirmation of safety and efficacy, both Oxfam and Nature Conservancy have softened or ended their opposition to GMOs. Isn't it time that you open your mind to the realities that GMOs are not only not unsafe, they would be of benefit to so many millions of children who are dying of blindness? Where are you getting this information from that GMOs are unsafe? Many of you live in a panic about everything you put in your mouth. Let me explain something to you. GMOs can save millions of lives. It's the environmentalists who are doing real harm to the world. And the best example of this is golden rice. Does anyone out there know what golden rice is? It's a GMO-created rice. It's enhanced with vitamin A-producing beta-carotene. 
I happen to know that one of the biggest problems in the third world was blindness in children. And do you know why they were going blind? Because it was from vitamin A deficiency. Even to this day, a half a million people, mainly children, will die from vitamin A deficiency. And a half a million people, mostly children, 500,000 people, mostly children, will lose their sight. And about 6,000 of them will die from vitamin A deficiency. And that is why companies spent a fortune hybridizing rice, in this case, in order to make certain that the rice was rich in vitamin A, in this case, bite carotene, it was to stop the blindness, it was to cure blindness. And so these idiots, these morons, are singing about GMOs. I see idiots in Marin County, California, driving around with, Stop Monsanto! Lily white morons who are afraid of everything in the world. They're afraid of black people, brown people, they're afraid of Asian people, they're afraid of uh, UFOs, they're afraid of uh, fluoride. They're afraid of brain waves in the air. They're afraid of pesticides. They're afraid of GMOs. Little chickens running around. Afraid of the whole world. Let me explain to you how corn was developed. Do you know how corn was developed? Well, it was developed by the evil Native Americans and Central Americans over a long period of time. Corn was originally a grass, a grass with a very small group of uh, flowers on the top, or seeds rather, and they started to hybridize it by picking the grasses with the largest seeds and cross-pollinating them or cross-matching them with other grasses with large seeds. Over and over and over and through millennia, they became corn. Do you understand that? Corn didn't just happen by itself. It, would, it was hybridized by Indian farmers until it became corn. Should we now have a bumper sticker that says, what, disinter them from their graves? And try them in the, in the United Nations for making corn. Do you understand that the cherry that you eat? Do you understand that the pear that you eat? Do you understand that the wheat that you eat? Do you understand that virtually everything that you eat has been genetically modified, if not by nature, then by man? And it is not toxic. This is a scare tactic of the radical left who are afraid of everything. Everything scares them. And was it not for this golden rice, the miracle grain, enhanced with vitamin A, a half a million more children a year would die from blindness because of vitamin A deficiency. And many of those lives could be saved if golden rice were in their diets. But the ongoing hatred of anti-GMO hippie activist groups and their lavish scare campaign with a global war chest estimated to exceed $500 million a year have kept golden rice off the global market. Do you understand that this is the same scare tactic that's being used with the fake global warming data? Do you understand how dangerous the left is to the survival of the human race? I don't think I've changed any minds here, but I'm trying to open up a dialogue. There's a lot of hysteria out there, and it, it's all stemming from the hysteria about GMOs. And I saw an article over the weekend in the New York Post entitled, How Neil Young and Greenpeace Work to Starve the World's Poor by Owen Patterson. And Owen Patterson is a member of the British Parliament, and he believes that Neil Young is doing more harm to the poor than Monsanto. And he's writing a song about fascism and chemical giants walking arm in arm. I mean, the aging hippie songwriter is following the lead of activists who claim that GMOs are harmful to health, farmers, and the environment. I totally agree with the writer. It's tragically wrong. And I believe that in reality, GMOs can save millions of lives. And it's the environmental wackos who are doing real harm to the world, which is not to say that I don't seek out organic fruits and vegetables where possible, but I'm not a poor man. I can afford them. Which is not to say that I wouldn't prefer to eat uh, range-fed beef, the little beef that I eat, although now lately as I get older, I, I don't know, I can't even look at a cow anymore without feeling sad for the cow, to be frank. I'm reaching a point where all life seems to be rather sacred to me. And so, therefore, that's not, it's not a, a cosmic statement that I'm making. It's a very personal statement. But the fact of the matter is the world's population, the world population is not at the point where we can afford to feed everybody with organic uh, uh, produce or organic, uh, organically raised meat. It's something that you'd get in Whole Foods for the very touchy-feely uh, white people who have nothing but money to spend on their perfect little selves positive that if they eat organically they're going to think organically and if they think organically the world will be a better place all racism sexism homophobia will go away if only they think correctly okay that's very nice but it's naive 
There are many other topics. And Bernie Sanders is out there on the hustings telling everyone how bad America is, pushing for socialism, and what he really wants to do is uh, establish a radical United States government, single-payer health care system. He would abolish tuition fees for in-state higher education. Everyone should get a free college education. Sounds nice. I would have liked that. Who would pay for it? You would. He would drive big money out of U.S. politics. No kidding. Tell that to Hillary Clinton. He would redistribute income. What does that mean? Right now, there's a graduate income tax, which is as fascistic and unfair as, as they come. Why should a high earner pay a higher rate of tax than a low earner? Why shouldn't there be a flat tax? Well, have you thought about that? He would increase Social Security benefits. Now, who doesn't want that? If you're on Social Security, wouldn't you want to increase Social Security benefits? So you can go to an Indian gambling casino and sit there with, with the chips in your hand, with your shaky diabetes arm, the upper arm shaking with the flab hanging down, with the cigarette in your mouth and the cup full of chips. He would break up the too-big-to-fail Wall Street banks. As you know, Wall Street's always been a target of people. And he's making believe he's against Wall Street, when in fact... He knows and I know that you get nowhere without Wall Street. And frankly, let's look at Wall Street. It's all not, not that all evil. I mean, they do fund businesses. Most of your new businesses were funded through Wall Street. So what are you talking about? Do they even know what they're talking about? Let me break it down for you. We'll go on to other topics. The next time you're sitting in New York City or San Francisco or Chicago or Washington and um, someone brings up the idea of, you know, socialism's not a bad idea. We really, I really think it would work quite well here. Tink, tink, says the cocktail drinker. So ask them a question. Why is it that when Haitian refugee, refugees risk their lives trying to get to Florida in homemade boats, Florida, remember, from Haiti is almost 500 miles away. Why would they risk 500 miles in an open sea in a broken little homemade boat to get to the evil capitalist empire of America? when they could have gone just 50 miles from Haiti to the workers' paradise of Fidel Castro in Cuba. I think that sort of ends the argument. Are the Haitians stupid? Or do they know that this evil capitalist empire called America is the greatest system that was ever created despite all of its flaws? The greatest place where the greatest good for the greatest number uh, happens to prevail. So again, use that analogy. Haitians, homemade boats, fleeing Haiti, why did they not go 50 miles to the workers' paradise of Cuba on the Fidel Castro? Why did they risk their lives and go 500 miles to get to the evil America, the capitalist America? Try that on your college uh, student daughter when she comes home from Harvard. Now, there's another fatal defect of socialism, and that is the disregard that socialism has for the role of private property rights, uh, period. Private property rights don't exist in a socialist, in a pure socialist government. If everyone in America owned land together... Everybody would act as if no one owned it. Take a look at Baltimore. They didn't even own that land. They burnt it to the ground, the thugs that Obama couldn't get enough of. And when no one owns it, no one will, will take care of it. Look at the public housing in America. Look at public housing and how the people abuse it, how they treat it like a, like, what's the word I'm looking for, like, like a cesspool. Why do people in public housing treat their own housing like garbage? Because they don't own it. Why don't they own it? Because they don't have the money to own it. We, the people, say, all right, look, they can't live in the street. Let's give them some public housing. Well, the least you would figure is they would take care of their housing, but they don't. Take a look at the sad state of public housing projects across America, and you will see exactly how socialism works. What about owning personal possessions? Do you know what happens under socialism? Did you know what happened in communist China when the communists took over China way back when? See, right now, China is not really a communist nation. China has more free capitalism right now than we do, combined with a fascist dictatorship running it, which is where we're going right now. But as far as an economic system goes, the Chinese enjoy more freedoms than we do. There are less taxes, there are lower regulations, and there's more freedom to produce goods and distribute goods and sell goods in China without government interference than we have in this country right now. That's something for you to know. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from, SwissAmerica.com. You know, there's a word in Spanish called duende that I learned 40 years ago, because I grew up listening to Spanish music. I know you've got me typecast, but I grew up on... Cuban, Puerto Rican, uh, Panamanian music in New York. And the thing is, I learned Spanish in school for seven years. 
and I came, I read Spanish literature. I had to read all the Spanish literature. I never really adapted that well to it. I like French and French language better, but in the Spanish language, there is a word called duende, which is loosely translated as meaning soul. And some songs have that magic called soul. Some music has it. Some art has it. You know, some poetry has it. Some talk show hosts have it and some don't. You can't buy Juende. You can't learn Juende. And this song has Juende. And when I heard it on the radio for driving to a restaurant, this is an important st story for me because it's a universal story about a, a single mother who is dying and her hardworking son, you know, looks at her and his heart's ripped out. Because when he was a boy, he thought life was easy and different. And he, he looked at his mother, you know, and he just can't believe how hard life is. It's such a beautiful song. And what I'm saying to you is we can't let our desire to save America and we can't let our desire to maintain borders, language, and culture poison us to all of the positive things that are brought in by some immigrants and some immigrant groups. We can't let that happen. We can't let the fanatical Muslims make us hate everyone else. I'll, I won't mince words. Let's make it real simple for you. Every time there's another arrest by the, by the FBI, it doesn't seem to be someone from Mexico, by the way, even though 30% of all criminals include many Mexicans. Don't say all Mexicans come here to rip the system off. It's just not true. And that's the poison that's going around. I'm trying to end the poison. I'm trying to make you understand you can have it. Yeah, you can have it both ways. Yes, you can have it both ways. If only you will use some, what shall I say, discernment? That's the word I'm looking for, discernment. And that's why I'm playing the song, because the song touched me all over again. I've never heard the song. This, the version I played for you is by La Tropa Velanata. I don't know. There's many versions of Los Caminos de la Vida, the road of life, the path of life, the paths of life, really. And it's about the paths of life and not what I used to hope. They're not what I used to believe. They're not what I used to imagine. They're hard to travel. They're hard to walk. And I can't find a way out. It's almost existential. It's amazing, the lyrics of it. But the last point of this is, the singer says, Yo pensaba que la vida era distinta, pardon my pronunciation. I used to think that life was different cuando era chiquiti when I was a little boy. To yo cria, I used to believe that things were easy. Like yesterday, that my married mother, you know. It's amazing, the song. And, and, and look, what the, look what the culture has brought here in so many positive ways. And you can't, again stereotype and categorize an entire culture or race in a negative way just because we're being flooded with so many haters from another culture and another religion. Period. End of story. Not all cultures are the same. Some bring things and some don't. Look at the Italian people. I mean, if you want to get focused on the Italian people, you say, oh, mafia. Well, that is so embarrassing to Italian people. What percentage of the Italian people were ever members of the mafia? A very tiny, tiny percentage. Tiny, tiny percentage. And look what the Italian culture has brought to society. Whether it be, forget the commonplace, common man says Italian food. What about opera, Italian opera? And the music of Italy and such. And that's why people were offended by the series The Sopranos, which, which implied that everyone was in the mafia. So you have to look at the positive of cultures. Virtually every part of our melting pot has brought something positive to the society until rather recently when Obama has chosen to flood Americans America with immigrants who have nothing to give us and everything to take. You get it? So don't fall for it. Don't let the left turn you against all immigrants because what they're trying to do is turn you into the image of a racist. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Extra, extra, hear all about an Italian family's protest forced cross-dressing of school children by perverts in the schools themselves. I told you from the beginning that was never about gay rights. It was never about an oppressed minority. It simply wanted equality. It was always about dominance. And we are paying the piper right now because of our tolerance. 
Parents from the north of Italy have organized a massive demonstration called Defend Our Children against gender ideology in schools, which will be held this Saturday in the St. John Lateran Square in Rome. What is it about? They're protesting Italian educational programs, which are meant to blur the sexual identity of young children. Did you hear what the vermin are doing? In the northern Italian city of Trieste, parents are in an uproar over a taxpayer-funded elementary school program which includes dressing little boys as girls and girls as boys to overcome so-called gender stereotypes. The perverts have taken over every aspect of every Western culture, which, by the way, is why ISIS is rising around the world. Make no mistake about it. ISIS is a counterpoint to these psychotics. You don't understand that. I do. I have a global perspective. I have a mystical perspective. I have a godly perspective. And I am telling you there is a reason ISIS is making gains. It's because of the vermin who have penetrated our culture and destroyed it from within. Schools are calling the exercise the game of respect, which purportedly adopts many guidelines from the European standards on sex education attributed to the World Health Organization. You know who they are, don't you? You know about the perverts from Brussels, don't you? With the alleged child sex slaves that they hold around Europe. You haven't heard about that? What do you think? They're all clean as the driven snow? Listen, there's more. The so-called perverted game of respect consists in a box containing several cards presenting the figures of different working roles, male and female housewives and husbands, male and female plumbers and firefighters, with the figures represented in exactly the same way to show that males and females are completely interchangeable. There is also a card from the perverts with a game called If He Were She and She Were He, where boys and girls are expected to exchange the clothes they are wearing in the classroom. The boy dresses as a girl, and the girl dresses as a boy. And then they discuss how they feel in that new role. Parents in Italy are especially up in arms over the school district's attempt to conceal the program and its contents from them. The Italian father of one of the children, Amadeo Rossetti, said that in early February he attended a PTA meeting where the program for the second semester was presented. When a Mr. Rossetti posed specific questions on issues of gender, School administrators, all perverts, by the way, categorically denied the presence of gender-based activities in the school. The foxes are inside the hen house. They're, got, they're, they're posing as humanitarians. They're posing as liberals. They're posing as kind. They're not. They're predators. One of the goals of the protesters is the enforcement of European Art Point Two Six, whatever that is, regarding informed consent whereby parents can ask the school to be informed before their children are introduced to courses with things like those regarding so-called gender theory, which, by the way, is a construct. Gender theory is a creation of the perverts in order to make the rest of us be frightened of them. That's my opinion. There is no such thing as gender theory. Either you're born a male or you're born a female. It doesn't matter how you act. You are born as a male or you're born as a female. Yes, I understand there's a small percentile biologically of people who are not male nor female. But by and large, we know this is a, a, a hogwash in order to confuse you. You want to hear more of what's going on in Italy? The land of the rising sun? Parents are also protesting a sex ed program for kindergarten students intended to highlight the similarities and differences between boys' and girls' bodies. The program involves one child lying down and the others placing their hand first on the child's heart to feel how it beats, and then on the diaphragm to feel it rise and fall. The text reads that quite obviously in the genital area, children can see that they're made differently from one another. Though the text does not specifically state that the children are to touch each other in the genital area, parents are complaining that it is understood that they should touch each other's genitals. Mr. Rossetti says that the upcoming demonstration in the Italian capital is absolutely essential since it is up to us as parents to defend our right to oversee the education of our children. The spokesman for the protest, Professor Massimo Gandalfini, said that Saturday's demonstration was organized, quote, to protect our children from the propaganda of gender theories that are appearing surreptitiously in an ever more worrying way in schools. Wouldn't it be nice if we had some men in America who took time out from basketball, baseball, and barbecue to uh, scream about the perverts who are trying to destroy their children's minds? We're also talking about Donald Trump, who has caused quite a stir by announcing his candidacy. 
And as I said to you, I certainly would support him if he runs as a Republican. I will not support him if he runs a, on a third party because it will only undermine whoever on the Republican ticket runs. And we cannot afford to have Hillary Clinton as president. She is only fit to be the librarian at the Clinton Library, in my estimation. She could take tickets at the front of the library. She could arrange kickbacks for Bill, if that's what they do, at the library. Uh, but she is not fit to run this country. We know what they did when they were here for eight years, right? You forgot about all the scandals? I know it's like the good old days for the uh, illegitimate. They thought those were great days. But they really weren't great days. Uh, the Clintons started the meltdown of American culture. Remember that. You see, his misbehaviors in the White House were unto themselves rather minor misbehaviors from one point of view because the wife looked the other way. She knew what he was. She, it was no surprise to her. But when you have a president so out of control that he can't control his urges, even in the White House, it tells you much more about him than you'd like to know. And that's what all the scandals were about. And she was an enabler. She enabled it to happen. So they are, uh, they are what they are, you know. There are many other topics. We have the meddlesome pope, the pope's mischief. As you know, the pope is mixing religion with politics, which is a no-no in the United States. He has been selected, hand-selected by the New World Order. He's the first non-European pope in 1,200 years. The same people who gave us Obama gave us this pope. The same people who gave us Obama and the Pope are giving the world a good beating. He is from an area where Marx's theory was used to rule over the people. The Pope is a danger to the world. Yes, I'll be very clear on that. He knows about as much about weather as my... Well, let's put it to you this way. The only thing the Pope knows about meteorology is that when it rains, his highly paid aides in the Vatican take out umbrellas and open them for him. The man knows nothing about climate. And for a religious man to do this is incomprehensible. How the Catholic people can put up with this, I don't know. And by the way, if he hates capitalism so much and wealthy people so much, I think the Pope ought to begin with an example by selling off some of the great art in the Vatican. And I think this Pope, this deceiver, what do you think? Because someone wears a holy robe, they're holy? Are you people nuts? How many imams are terrorists? Oh, you're willing to go along with that, aren't you? Well, the Pope is a Marxist. I stand by those words. He is a wolf in, in uh, Pope's clothing. He is an eco-wolf in Pope's clothing. He is a stealth Marxist in religious garb. What do you think I have to get on my hands and knees for him? He's a man. He's a man, and I disagree with his big lie, and I resent mixing religion with politics in my nation. It's sickening. It's bad enough we had to put up with Obama mixing race with politics for all these years. Now we have to put up with a mixing Catholicism with, with politics. It's disgusting. The world is melting down in front of our eyes because of men like this, the deceiver, the great deceiving pope. And so we have to stand up to him. It's that simple. This is simple. But again, I would make an offer right now in order to help the world's poor and to help the pope distribute some of the wealth of the, Vatic wealth of the Vatican I, Michael Savage, hereby bid $1 million for any Michelangelo in the Vatican. That's an opening bid. I realize it may be worth more. <laughs> I'll, I'll put up a $1 million for any one of the Michelangelos in the Vatican. I'll even go a step further. I'll put up $5 million if they'll sell me the Sistine Chapel and transport it to San Francisco. I mean, I know it may be worth more, but think of all of the poor that can be fed with that five million, Mr. Pope. Why don't you put your money where your mouth is, and why don't you show the people you're not a stooge of the radical left? What a disgrace this world has become, that you would sit there idly and go in those pews and throw money into those pots. Pew on it! Pew on it! It stinks to high heaven! And I don't give a damn what he wears. I don't care what mumbo-jumbo he uses. It's disgusting to mix, poli to mix politics with religion like this in my country. Secondly... The man sounds like the false prophet in Revelation. He sounds just like the false prophet in Revelation. An ecumenical spiritual figure directing mankind to worship the Antichrist. The man is a false prophet. I'll, how could you buy this garbage? How in the world can you buy this? The world is cooling off. And the man is pushing this to attack capitalism? This is unbelievable to me. We're living in global tyranny right now.
We are living in global tyranny where the big lie is told over and over again, and there's almost no one to stand up to the big liars. The man is a liar. The man is a criminal. The man has crossed the barrier between uh, politics and religion. And I resent the Pope. I don't care how big his cross is. It doesn't matter to me. He's a Marxist through and through. I don't care how white his robes are. He doesn't belong in this nation lying about climate change. He has no right to do that. None whatsoever. And I don't know how any fair-minded Catholic can not be as outraged as I am. Do you realize what Marxism he is espousing here? The Pope put out a 192-page encyclical on global warming. That is a complete lie and fraud. All it is is the environmentalist movement and the Marxist movement combined. He lambasts the rich. He says the rich loot the world. He attacks bankers and climate skeptics for accelerating its decline. Well, let me tell you something, Popey. I am a climate skeptic, and I'm a trained scientist. You don't know you're behind from climate. I know more about climate than you do. You liar, you. He then goes on to the big lie, saying the world is facing widespread, widespread crop failure, economic ruin, mass migration, the structure of entire ecosystems. It's all rubbish. The most advanced weather station in the world has just reported that we are in a 10-year cooling cycle. How dare this fraudulent pope, who to me is no better than Rachel Donazal, not be challenged by every Catholic with a college education in the world? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from. Nobody would be tougher on ISIS than Donald Trump. We won't be using a man like Secretary Kerry. He goes into a bicycle race at 72 years old and falls and breaks his leg. I won't be doing that. <laughs> the American dream is dead. But if I get elected president, I will bring it back bigger and better and stronger than ever before. And we will make America great again. Well, let's hope so. And let's hope that Donald really runs and chooses a great running mate that we can really, you know, sink our teeth into, so to speak, such as Dr. Ben Carson. That's a winning ticket. Because, you know, the Dr. Ben Carson is the antithesis to the uh, uh, president we have now. Ben Carson is genuine. He is not a construct. Ben Carson is a pediatric neurosurgeon, which is about as difficult as it gets in neurosurgery. Ask any neurosurgeons about pediatric neurosurgery. You cannot fake your way into pediatric neurosurgery. And although he is African-American, he did not need affirmative action to become a pediatric neurosurgeon. He had the brains and the skill set to become a pediatric neurosurgeon. The opposite is true for Barack Obama, who has used race as a weapon to get where he is. And so I support the, the Donald Trump candidacy. I hope he runs, and I hope he chooses someone like Carson. And we'll wait and see. The other topic is, uh, you know, the one that won't go away is the fake black, this Rachel character who continues to lie about her race. She's a con woman, in my estimation, nothing more and nothing less. And thus far, I have not seen any members of the um, civil rights community, you know, speak out against her activities. I haven't seen any of the uh, pompous members of the Congressional Black Caucus who are just so offended by everything, not offended by her, apparently. Why has there been no march in demand for the truth about Rachel Donazal? Which raises a bigger question, by the way, which is that if she can fake her race by claiming race is just a construct, well, if we take her on a word, as many of the leftists do, then we don't need these race-baiting organizations who are built only a, around race, right? Anyway, just a thought. Uh, the phone number here is 855-400-7282. We're also talking about the sexual madness in our schools, Italian families protesting this Saturday, the forced cross-dressing of school children by deviants and perverts. When did the word deviant and pervert, when did the words deviant and pervert get dropped from the uh, English language dictionary. Has anyone told me that they have read an official statement that there's no such word as the word deviant? There is no such word as the word pervert in the dictionary? You know, those words still exist. 
In fact, as I speak with you today on the Savage Nation radio program, I am rifling through my books. Here they are. And I'm going to get for you two books that I use on occasion. One is the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and the other is Roger's Thesaurus, which I've enjoyed since college days. And both of them have words in them. Now, maybe these are old editions. They could be old editions. They could be the old straight white male edition. I don't know. There may be a new edition that I'm not aware of. But let me go into the old straight white male Merriam-Webster Dictionary and look up the word pervert. And let us see if the word has any meaning. Pemmican, penology, filter. Oh, it takes a while for me to flip through the pages in the old way. I know I should be doing it on the Internet, and it would be faster, admittedly. But I want to use the old straight white male's dictionary just for now to see what this antique book has to say. And here it is, perspective. I have to turn the page now. Pert. We're getting there. Ah, pervade. Perverse. Here we go. Perverse. Hmm. Turned away from what is right or good. <laughs> Robert, that's the actual definition. Turned away from what is right or good. Perverse. Uh, corrupt. Obstinate in opposing what is reasonable or accepted. Okay. Interesting. So these words do exist in the old straight white male Merriam-Webster dictionary. I do not know if they're still permitted to be taught on university campuses where perverts have taken over the colleges and universities. We are all reeling from this disaster, the series of murders in South Carolina. We're asking who's to blame, and we're looking for leadership. We have no leadership. We have no way to turn. Not one Republican has stepped up. And I suggested the president, instead of blaming guns, should have said anyone who crosses state lines will be arrested under the Anti-Riot Act. You're not going into South Carolina to stir up a riot. That's what should have been done, but I haven't heard it. Well, we have a leader on the line right now, someone that I would vote for in a heartbeat, someone I would support right from the get-go, and that's Donald Trump. Donald Trump, welcome to the Savage Nation. I'm glad you're with us. Hello, Michael. It is a sad day, is it not? Nine beautiful people executed in a church? Terrible. By a maniac, by a, a young man that is just an absolute sick, demented person. It's it's a very sad thing, Michael. It's a very sad thing. Donald, look, let's talk about the election. That's what this is all about. You know me. I'm straightforward, and I'm not trying to set you up, but people have called the show since you announced it. I, I support you from the get-go. But many people are saying, well, look, how do you know he's real? How do you know he's not going to split the Republican vote by running as a third-party candidate, pulling a Ross Perot? Would you answer that question? Do you think it's a, a, a fair fear? Well, first of all, I have to say I'm real, and I'm very serious about it, Michael. I think our country is run by incompetent people. We have an incompetent president who truly doesn't have a clue. I don't think he has a clue. You know, a lot of people think he's a bad person. I don't know if he's good or bad. I can tell you what he is. He's incompetent. He doesn't, have, he doesn't know what he's doing. And, you know, you look at Sergeant Bergdahl, where we get Bergdahl, the traitor. We get Bergdahl. They get five killers that are out there on the field now trying to kill everybody. And, you know, this is the way we would negotiate. This is the way... He negotiates. We, you know, the Iran deal is a disaster. The trade deals are all a disaster. Every, every country is beating us in trade. And believe me, if I win, that won't happen. That will not be happening, that I can tell you. Well, well, let me ask you this. Given the antipathy of the Republican establishment to your candidacy because they're afraid by your, your simple, plain, honest truths and what needs to be done, would you consider running on a third-party ticket? And you know what that would do. That would elect Hillary, wouldn't it? Sure. I'm never writing anything off. I'm gonna. I'm running as a Republican. I am a Republican. I'm a conservative. Okay. Well, you said it right now. You said I'm running as a Republican. That's that's really what I said. I said he's not going to split the ticket. Yeah. I'm I'm running as a Republican. I want to go all the way. I don't like a lot of these people. I, it's not even like I don't respect some of these people. They right. They shouldn't be running for office. They have no right, right. to run for office. Donald, you know that the best and the brightest generally don't go into politics. You being the exception. And you said years ago, run the country like a business not like uh, God knows what it is, a welfare state. Right. You and I both agree there should be tariffs on, on Chinese goods. Don't you agree? They're, they're, they're tariffing our goods. They're putting tariffs and taxes on our goods, and we talk about free trade. You know, the problem with free trade is you need speak to smart people to negotiate for I don't mind. I love free trade. I'm a free trader. But right. China's not a free trader. 
They're killing us. You know, when Boeing sells planes to China, they take all the secrets of Boeing. That's part of the deal. You're going to have to give us all your patents, all your <sighs> secrets. You're going to have to give us everything. I mean, it's brutal you do business with them. I have a friend that tries to get stuff into China. He can't get it in. Finally, he gets it in, and they charge him tax. And yet we think they're so wonderful. And, you know, they put out a statement about me from the Chinese embassy. I was very mm. proud of that, of course. But they put out a statement that Mr. Trump is wrong, essentially. Mr. Trump is wrong. We have a wonderful partnership with the United States. Uh -huh. with the partnership. Well, of course they love it. I love it, too, when we have stupid partners that don't know what they're doing. You know? Sure, like, like the, the battery maker, A123 Systems, which was given $133 million in, in federal taxes and whatnot, tax credits and, and grants. They went bankrupt. The company was then bought by a Chinese company, and now they're making a profit and not going to pay back the federal government. What a deal they got. Hey, Donald? Uh, we are... We are incompetent you know the 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 people that we have negotiated we have great people we have henry kravis and carl icon and you know i could name a hundred guys i could also name guys that have big names that aren't very good you know they're overrated but i know the good ones <laughs> you know the bad ones i could put people in charge of china china doesn't have a chance i could put people in charge of japan you know japan sends in millions of cars over the years millions when was the last time you see a Chevrolet in Tokyo? Do you think there's any Chevrolet in Tokyo? Maybe there are two. You know, how many Chevrolets do you think we have driving around in the no, Tokyo? Donald, I see the ships coming in San Francisco Bay every day. My heart breaks. I see these ships laden with foreign cars, and I don't understand why there's no tariffs on them. Well, how about this? Ford goes out and announces they're going to build a $2.5 billion plant in Mexico, right smack in the middle of Mexico. They're going to build, and you know what they're going to do with the plant? They're going to make cars and parts and trucks and stuff. They're going to send them to the United States, no tax. Now, explain to me, because I'm sort of a natural business. I built a great company. You see that because I released my financials, and everyone's sort of shocked. They had no idea. Right. They were, you know, they were hoping hoping that they wouldn't be so good and they were, yeah, they were hoping they were hoping you were broke and that you you owed more money than you earned i know that's what they were hoping they were they were they were disappointed weren't they right. oh well they were shocked because i'm a private company they didn't know so they were thinking it was 2 billion or 1 billion or nothing or maybe i was worth nothing and it turned out to be 9 billion and <laughs> Much higher than that, it will be. Much higher than that. But nine billion. And by the way, very little debt. Unbelievable. So they were shocked. You know, they're going, wow, that we had no idea. Because again, as a private company, these magazines and all who treat me fine, but they don't know what. And, and I'm not doing that as a braggadocious thing. I'm just saying, I know what I'm doing. I would not let Mexico get away with it. I would tell Ford, you're going to pay a 35% tax every time you make a car and send it in. Because what are they doing? When they make cars in Mexico, that means we're not making that car in the United States. It's very simple. And that means we're not employing our people. Do you know how many companies have gone to Mexico to, to build? I mean, it's, you look at New England. The place was a ghost town. Yes. So, look, we need – and I love Mexico. I, th I love the Mexican people. I have a lot of relationships with them. But – they know they're getting away with murder. It's like China. China is the number one abuser, though. What they do with their currency manipulation is incredible. And our people are so stupid, they don't even cover it in trade packs. Donald, when you announced this week, I watched the little people, the, the Lilliputians, attack you. You know what I called them? I said they're toe dust compared to him. I saw these little men and little women trying to rip you apart, and I said they are toe dust. That's all they are. They're jealous of this man, and there's a lot of jealousy for successful people in this country, as you well know, Donald. Who would you pick as a VP candidate? Well, before I say that, you have like a guy like George Will. His hatred for me is unbelievable. What he doesn't tell it, you know, you take his glasses off, and he doesn't look like a smart guy anymore, right? But <laughs> he yeah, was, call uh, him, Let's call him toe dust in a bad suit. Right. I have a place, Mar-a-Lago, and he was there about 12 years ago. He made a speech. I didn't go to it because I find him very boring. And he's actually wrong on many things. He was wrong on Iraq and wrong on plenty of things. But he, the hatred this guy has, I said, wow, I probably should have gone. But he was just, you know, I just didn't want to go. And it was years ago, but he never forgot. And that's the only reason. He hits me, and they do hit well, me. Well, why, why, he didn't like that you didn't go to his speech at Mar-a-Lago? Absolutely. He was very upset about it. He was very, very upset about it. But wow. you know, I have other things to do, and I couldn't go to his speech, and he never forgot it, and he hits me. And that's why. That's the way these guys – by the way, his speech was terrible. I had a friend that went there. They said it was terrible. So but I didn't do anything. Donald, a guy like George Will, his time has gone a long time ago. He's irrelevant. No one reads him. But the issue is you. You're running. You're real. You don't really want to run a, a, as a third-party candidate. You say you're a Republican, even though they have a great fear of you. 
Would you be willing to consider a great man such as Ben Carson as a VP candidate, or is it too soon to ask that question? Michael, it's too soon to talk. I like Ben Carson. He's a nice guy. I know him. I've actually seen him at some of my places, and he's really a nice guy. He's got a very nice wife. I met them both, and, and you know, they're nice people. But even Ben Carson, you know, it's like he doesn't have the experience to run something like that. He he's a surgeon, and it's different. It's not. Uh, so you say I we need someone? You need someone with a killer instinct like you. We need a killer who's smart, and not a killer. I know a lot of. Well, no, I say that in a, in a sports context. I grew up watching boxing matches, as I'm sure you do, because you have them in your hotels. And I was told since I'm a child by my father, the reason one man beats another, he said, Michael, watch that fight. The guy with the killer instinct usually wins. I never understood it till I got older and got punched a few times to understand what the killer instinct meant. Donald, you and I see the world the same way. You know, when I supported you the other day on this show, I was shocked that that low-life writer at the National Review, whose name I don't remember, wrote such a horrible thing about you and said that your father gave you your empire, gave you your money, and you're a, he was a slumlord. That is such crap. I happen to know that your father built some of the finest middle-class apartment blocks in New York, both in Brooklyn and Queens. I know it for a fact because one of my relatives lived in them. They were beautiful buildings. Why do they do such things? Well, because, you know, the National Review is going out of business, in my opinion. I think it's doing very badly. William Buckley, William F. Buckley, I knew him. He was great. I was a young guy. He was a much older guy. But right. he was a great guy. And, right. Nash, and he must be spinning in his grave. They have a bunch of lowlifes over there. Well, they've what attacked I me for years, and I understand that they're, they're run by these Lilliputians. But it's one thing to not like someone. It's another thing to outright lie and say your father was a slumlord. I took offense at that, and he wasn't my father. Well, you know what? My father was a terrific guy, and he built middle-income housing and low-income housing, and he did a right. great job for a lot of people, and he was a really good person, and he taught me a lot. And frankly, he did me a favor because he didn't want me to go to Manhattan, and I wanted, and he never went to Manhattan. And I right. said, Pop, I want to go to Manhattan. I want to build those big buildings. He said, Son, that's not our league. We don't want to do that. It's not our league. And I went. And, you know, that was mm. another thing. I guess I can add that to the book. Look, our country is in serious, serious trouble. And, you know, my theme is very simple. Make America great again. We can make it great. We've got to take back our jobs from China. And I don't even mean all of them. We have to take back some of this stuff that's going on. You can't buy. If you want to buy a television, I just ordered 4,000 televisions for a big project I'm, I'm doing someplace. And, I, you know, I order televisions all the time. I have Doral in Miami. I, I've always, you know, they come from South Korea. Sanyo, you have this. That. They're all South Korea. And I'm saying to myself, wouldn't it be nice if we made televisions? I actually tell my people, is there a company that makes televisions in the United States? <laughs> Get the bids, and they're all from South Korea. Now, when South Korea has a problem, they're making a fortune off us, right? When South Korea has a problem with North Korea, where the guy starts rearing his head and he wants to, you know, start throwing around the nuke word and everything else, we immediately send our ships over. We send it. We get nothing. They don't get anything. Anything. We get you know, nothing. We don't get it. We don't get a jar of uh, kimchi from them in exchange. Hey, Michael, Saudi Arabia makes a billion dollars a day. A billion a day. Think of it. A billion dollars a day. Donald, what do you have to say to the millions of people who listen to the show and hear you as a leader who does not blame the American people for what's going on, but blame an incompetent, divisive government for what's going on? I'm serious about this. I'm, I'm giving up a lot by doing it. These politicians give up nothing. They're all talk. They're no action. They're never going to bring us to the promised land. They don't know what they're doing. And we're in a bubble. We're going to have a problem like you've never seen before. We have to take our jobs back from China. We have to take our jobs back from Mexico and all the other places that are just ripping us. So I'll do it, and they understand I'll do it. The other side knows. I deal with them all the time. I beat them all the time. Mexico is now deporting more illegal aliens than the, than the United States. I love your idea of the Great Wall. Donald Trump, thank you so much, and good luck. I hope you do run. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver, call eight. You never read about me. They hate me at Fox News because I leave them in the dust. I'm never mentioned by the great Rush Limbaugh for obvious reasons. God bless him. He created a medium for all of us. But he's had his day. And i got to tell you right now that what I'm attempting to do in talk radio has never been done before, which is just simply survive. I can tell you the world is changing. 
I can tell you you're changing. I can tell you your views are changing. I can tell you that people don't know what to do from one day to the next. And I can tell you they don't know where to turn for any guidance. They don't know where the lodestone is anymore. They don't know where north is, south is, east is, west is. So what happens in times like this is that people tend to cleave to what they know. If they're religious, they become more religious. If they're irreligious, they become more irreligious. If they're immoral, they become more immoral. If they're drug addicts, they become more addicted to drugs. If they're sex addicts, they become more addicted to sex. And so you say, well, well then what are you talking about? Where are you leading us? I don't know. You decide where I'm leading you. I'm not leading you anywhere. I'm only a talk show host. I'm not a politician. I'm not a movie star. I have no nothing to offer you other than thinking. I guess I'm leading you to the think for yourself. Maybe that's what I'm trying to do. Maybe I'm leading you to try to think for yourself. Thinking, 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 thinking. It's as rare as writing books. Yeah, thinking today is, a, is an endangered uh, activity. You're all complaining how bad you have and how horrible life is, and we know that the reptile in the White House is as bad as they can get, I think. We know that. We understand that we have no party. We have a one-party system. I mean, you ask yourself, where are those young conservatives that were elected? Senator Cotton, they stripped them of all committee assignments, denied all funding to his congressional district. In other words, they put him, he's the Rosa Parks of the Republican Party. And where is that young black lady elected in the last election, whose name you have forgotten, super conservative, Salt Lake City, black woman in a white district, where, where is she? She's the Rosa Parks of the Republican Party. The vermin called John Boehner and McConnell, these racist pigs, put her in the back of the bus, and they get away with it. Why? Not because of the race or the sex or this. Uh, it's because of the politics. The conservative is the new whipping boy in America. So what happened to the country? I don't know. So how do you live with it? You can complain about it day and night. You could sit and fetch and read the news stories about what they're doing and sit here and talk about a better time in the past and how we got to do this and got to do that. All right, there's an audience for that, but you know what? Don't count me uh, Count me out of that one. I, I've done it for 20 years. Let me tell you something. The world is changing around all of us. The landscape of politics is changing right in front of our eyes. It's as though a great smoke is coming off a swamp, and we don't even know what's going to be left when the smoke clears. It's as though we're waking up every day to a new dawn. And in this new dawn, there's a huge fog on a swamp. And we don't know what the swamp contains. We don't know what kind of animals are in that swamp. We don't know what's going to come at us next. That's how most people see the world. And I'm talking about people who are conscious. I'm not talking about the average schmendrick around you. The guy walking down the street next to you doesn't know what's going on around them. He doesn't know, nor does he care. When did he ever know or care? Tell me when the average Joe ever cared or knew what was going on around them. Never. Not until he walked into a plate glass window. Or got hit by a bus in a crosswalk, did he know what was going on? But it's worse now. You got the schmucks running around with, with a phone in their hand, and they look at it. They cross a street looking into an iPhone. That's the world you live in. So the world's changing. Everything's changed. Radio's changing. Talk radio's not what it was, never mind 20 years ago, never mind 10 years ago, never mind 5 years ago. Talk radio is not what it was one minute ago. You have to be able to create. You have to be able to move on a dime, not only for your own survival, but for the survival of the whole medium of talk radio. That's where we are today. And as I pointed out, John Boehner is no different than Alexander Hamilton, one of our revered founding fathers, uh, in, in doing deals against the best interests of the people. I explained the Whiskey Rebellion. Now, many of you are decent people, but you're free of all knowledge, so you don't know what's going on around you. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Clinton donated $100,000 to New York Times Group the same year paper endorsed her. What's new about that? The New York Times is what? What, what has it ever been? Is anything, anything but a publicity rag for the radical left? No. They take my book. Yeah, I'll make it personal. Countdown to Mecca. It beat four other books in sales for two weeks in a row, and they refused to list it as one of the top 15. What does that tell you? It tells you what you need to know. You're living in a, in a concentration camp of ideas. 
You know, only the leftist ideas uh, need apply. It's an interesting statement. I was reading over the weekend that liberalism is making a comeback in America, according to a, 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 a survey of a thousand adults. I love it, a thousand adults. I don't know any conservative who has ever been approached by a pollster, nor would reply to a pollster. But anyway, a thousand adults. Who are these adults? Where they meet them all in a, in a club, and they say that uh, people are more accepting of liberal ideas now. And they shift on this. Gay marriage, of course, is the number one thing. Day and night brainwashing. Br day and night, like Lenny Reifenstahl, around the clock. Gay marriage, gay marriage, gay marriage, gay marriage, gay marriage, gay marriage, gay marriage. Sex change, sex change, sex change, sex change. Gay marriage, gay marriage. Gay well, it's on anyone's mind. It's also on their minds. They're psychotic. They're nuts. The Islamic State is throwing gay men off roofs headfirst under the guise of Muslim Sharia law. There are pictures of them being thrown off a building from, from a Fox News pictures. And you have to look at the pictures to understand what I'm saying to you. ISIS is throwing gay men off roofs in the areas that they capture, for example, in Mosul. And they make hundreds of innocent people watch this happen. The gay men are held by their feet and dropped head first. The Islamic State released a series of horrifying photos showing blindfolded men tossed head first off a building because ISIS claimed they were gay. Not one word from the gay lobby in America, not one word from the gay lobby in Europe, not one word from the United Nations, not one word from that lying, thieving, backstabbing, anti-American creature in the White House. Women are being kidnapped and raped. Eight-year-old girls are being kidnapped and sold as slaves and raped by these vermin throwback subhumans. Islamic State subhumans. Not one word from a women's group, a woman's group anywhere on earth. I mean, you could sit idly by, but you're the type that sat idly by while the Jews were being gassed in the gas chambers. Oh, I know. Why, if they dare do that again, you'd, you'd do what? You'd do nothing. You would do nothing. You're exactly the good German. All of you are the good German. You've done nothing while this is going on. While this Holocaust occurs, you've done nothing. You've enabled Obama. You've enabled Obama, which is why this is happening. All of you liberals are guilty for these rapes and murders because you've enabled Obama. You've enabled a sorority that looks the other way, that is concerned with sexual harassment in the military as opposed to real rape, real kidnapping, and real murder. But you don't care because you're a good American, and good Americans don't care about such things. And secondly, what do you care about Iraq and gays? You're not Iraqi and you're not gay. So why should you care about that? Let them throw them off the roofs. Is that right? Is that what you want? Well, that's, your, that's what America's become. Indifferent, numb, eight-second attention span. The attention span not of a goldfish but of a gnat. You have the attention span of a drosophila fly. That's what you have. I was reading an article about creativity and psychosis sharing a genetic source. Artistic creativity may share genetic roots with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, according to a study published today. The research published in the journal Nature Neuroscience delves into a well-known genetic database, the Decode Library of DNA Codes, derived from samples provided by the population of Iceland. Let me stop right there. I'm sorry, I have nothing against Icelanders, but if I were to study creativity, I would not choose a population of Icelanders. So far as I know, they're not very well known for creativity. They may be fine people. They may know how to ski and whatever they do, they'll kill musk ox. Of course, mus mus musk ox are dead for a long time. Whatever they kill up there, rain there. But why would you study schizophrenia and creativity in Iceland? Who would choose such a pop? I know why they choose such a population, because it's a homogeneous population. So the authors looked at 86,000 Icelanders. Listen, if you put me in Iceland, I'd go schizophrenic within a half a year. How could you live there? What is there to do there? I mean, I don't have no idea. Why would anyone live there unless they were born there? So they looked at the genomes of people engaged in artistic work. All right. And these samples came from more than 1,000 volunteers who were members of Iceland's National Societies of Visual Arts, Theater, Dance, Writing, and Music. All right, fine. And they found that members of these organizations were 17% likelier than none members to have the same genetic signature. So what? So what are they proving? What, people who are creative tend to be a little bipolar? 
or a little schizophrenic and listen to me i don't understand why the study has any validity whatsoever we all know that creative people tend to be a little nuts and we all know that psychotic people tend to be a little creative and so what's new about the study nothing i guess they had to send somebody to iceland uh, with an nsf grant or an nih grant or something like that but let me ask you something if you are a creative person you know that you're under the pressure of having certain impulses that the people around you have never had. Feelings, sensitivities, intuitions, uh, and things like that. And as opposed to the normal paths, who either never feel these things or suppress them, you as an artist not only don't suppress those feelings, you engage with them. And that's how you can paint, and that's how you can write, that's how you can compose music, right? Is this something you're interested in? I don't really know. I have no idea what people are interested in. So here's another hater. Remember Jimmy Carter, what he did to this country? Well, now he's coming out saying that white Americans cling to feelings of superiority toward minorities. Can you believe that they're all in the same playbook? Hillary Clinton attacking, again, white people against minorities. Jimmy Carter, who almost destroyed America single-handedly said white Americans cling to feelings of superiority toward minority. How would he know that? Isn't he a white American? When did Jimmy Carter become a minority? Jimmy Carter says white Americans cling to feelings of superiority towards minorities. How would the nut know that? How would this nut know this? How would this nut know that unless he feels the same thing? How would Jimmy Carter know that white people, all white people now, cling to feelings of superiority over minorities? Now, he's speaking for all white people, but how would he know what other people think? So, in other words, he feels superior to minorities. And now he's trying to project it on the white race as a whole. How can a race survive with such haters like this in it? How do they get this way? Madness. Power madness. Bankrupt. I don't have an answer for it. Meanwhile, here in America, we seem to have learned nothing. The world is changing. Your views are changing. No one knows where the lodestone is anymore. Thinking today is an endangered activity. We know we have a one-party system, and we don't know what to do about it. I wouldn't say we're sitting here stunned that Hillary went to the uh, race war fair level, because that's what she's known for. But her going so ugly so fast is quite revolting on one hand, but on the other shows a complete lack of reality. She's out of touch with reality. She gives a speech in an all-black college. The audience is minuscule, a few hundred people. The stadium is empty, so they put up screens so the TV cameras won't show the empty audience. And she gives a speech, again going to the race and hate warfare that she's known for, saying that we're disenfranchising blacks and the poor and others, I guess people of color, from voting, which is utter nonsense. A few people destroyed America, just a few. It's always been only a few. And that they're about to do it again now by giving us the Hillary thing. I wouldn't mind if she got up there and tried to unify America, unite America, defend America, attack ISIS and say she'll do whatever she can to defeat them. She wants to defeat only the white person in America by, by coming up with this big lie. It's like a blood libel. It's like blood libel from the worst of the white race is coming out of their mouths now. Scientists grow bio-artificial rat limb in lab. Saw that the other day. Next, lab-grown baboon arms. Maybe next, in a few years, we'll have lab-grown politicians. Maybe we could breed out racism from the politicians and hatred, and then we'd have a real candidate. Imagine if we could breed out racism and hatred in politicians in a, in a, in a Petri dish. I remember reading that a good percentage of our medicines today still derive from natural products, meaning come from plants or uh, minerals or whatever, from nature, in other words. that they, Although in the age of synthetic and synthetically derived medicines, about a third of our drugs still derive from nature, which I thought was amazing. Now, Chinese medicine, this is still largely true. And people who are ignorant in this country like to think that it's all voodoo and witchcraft, and it's easy to dismiss the whole field. But what attracted me when I was very young was the whole story. It was a simple story about how aspirin was discovered. So I remember the story of Bayer aspirin. How did it, how did it happen? Well, apparently in Germany, a man's father suffered arthritis. And by using the folk remedy of willow bark, they would boil salix willow bark 
and uh, the concoction that arose from the boiling of the willow bark, the, the drink, the tea, soothed the man's rheumatism and arthritis. Well, the young man was very, very interested in knowing what was in that stuff that enabled his father not to be crippled with, you know, the pain. And he found that inside that, that uh, stuff was a chemical structure known as salicin. And he converted it into salicylic acid. It's an acetyl derivative of salicylic acid, by the way, that became aspirin. That's what it was. So in other words, it was derived originally from willow bark, and then he synthesized by converting the basic structure into something else, into aspirin, acetyl salicylic acid. Still one of the greatest drugs ever, ever invented. I use it all the time. I find it to be a miracle for almost everything. It's astounding. I use it as a sedative. If I take an aspirin at night, it's like a sedative for me. It's like a sleeping pill. And it doesn't harm me in any way whatsoever. I've been doing it for years. And I won't use anison, and I won't use... If I have pain, I try never to use acetaminophen for the obvious reasons. I try to avoid them like the plague. There may be a better painkiller, but I don't really want to kill my liver at the same time. I just thought I'd tell you the story of the uh, of aspirin, how it came from the bark, and uh, the rest is history. Then he built a whole company called Bayer. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from, SwissAmerica.com. Uh, schizophrenia, genius, that kind of thing. Is there a relationship between creativity and psychosis? Well, a new study says there's a common genetic source. We know that to be creative, you have to think differently from everyone else. And we know that carriers of genetic factors that predispose to schizophrenia also can predispose to creativity. And I think the challenge for any artist or any creative person is to not go off the rails, in other words, while creating. But there are other outside elements that affect whether we go off the rails or can create, okay? And we can look at sex itself. How old should a person be as having their first sex? See, that's a big question. What is the age of consent right now? What should it be? Ruth Bader Ginsburg, one of the most evil, demented people in the history of the U.S. Supreme Court, a woman who has cursed America for all these years on the Supreme Court, a woman who was never qualified to be on the Supreme Court, a woman who had previously been the chief counsel for the ACLU, one of the most dangerous organizations the world has ever seen. The ACLU has done more damage to America than ISIS. She was the chief counsel, and she's been on the Supreme Court for many years now, put there by Republicans, incidentally. The same Republicans who rubber-stamped Ruth Bader Ginsburg, rubber-stamped Loretta Lynch as attorney general. The very same character players, incidentally. So why is she being talked about by me? Because she wants the age of consent, the last I checked, lower to 14 years of age. Well, that's pretty amazing. Everyone knows that younger than uh, a certain age is very harmful to the child. Very harmful. And we live in a society where if a young person has not had sex with another person, by a certain age, they consider themselves, well, something's wrong. So movies like a 40-year-old virgin, you know, things like that. And you laugh at people who don't have sex. And so a study was done on this very issue of timing of first sex has far-reaching relationship effects. Research looking at how the timing of sexual initiation in adolescence impacts adult romantic ties, finds that having sex later may lead to better relationships. Later, not earlier, as Ruth Bader Ginsburg would imply. It says the timing of sexual initiation in adolescence influences romantic outcomes, such as whether people get married or live with their partners, how many romantic partners they've had, and whether they're satisfied with their relationship later in adulthood. It's an interesting study. So they classify those having an early sexual relationship as younger than 15, an on-time one as 15 to 19, or a late one older than 19, as first experience with sexual intercourse. And they published it in Psychological Science. And as expected, later timing of first sexual experience was associated with higher educational attainment and higher household income in adulthood when compared with the early and on-time groups. Individuals who had a later first sexual experience were also less likely to be married, and they had fewer romantic partners in adulthood. I think half these studies make no sense. But I think it's an interesting point of departure for a discussion. 
which is what age of consent should there be in the United States of America. The fanatics at the ACLU want it lowered to 14 or 12 or whatever. Maybe 10 will be the new norm. Maybe in a few more years after Bruce Jenner, uh, it'll be five. We don't know how sick the society can get. It's melting down faster than Chernobyl did. Let's talk about these topics, would you please? If we have the devil's sound from Europe, like he attacked the judge who blocked his amnesty. They're throwing gays off roofs in Iraq, and he does nothing against ISIS. Women, young girls are being kidnapped and raped and sold into slavery. He does nothing. And he gives a crazy speech from Europe. Did you hear it where he said, you have to hear the sound bite. He said, our policy is not yet firm in the Middle East. And Robert, do we have that mad statement by the president? It's utterly madness to listen to this. Clip 10, you got to hear this one. Listen to this. When uh, a finalized plan is presented to me by the Pentagon, then I will share it with the American people. It's not, uh, I, we don't yet have uh, a, uh, a complete strategy because it requires commitments on the part of the Iraqis as well uh, about how Passing recruitment takes box. place, how that training Can takes place. Can you imagine the uh, leader of the most powerful military on earth saying he doesn't have a strategy in the Middle East? And he's waiting on the Iraqi military. Can you imagine? Think, I want you to think about what he just said. We know that he got to Bavaria and drank a beer at 11 in the morning local time. We know that he was having a good time. Maybe he was drunk when he said this. It's a delusion. This is a delusional man. I can't get no relief. Nobody can get any relief. That's why they're all stoned out of their gourd on prescription drugs. Meanwhile, condemning the crack dealer on the street. They ought to condemn the doctor who gave him the the, uh, the, the the antidepressant. He's a bigger drug dealer than the crack dealer. The criminal bully in the White House. You're not going to believe this story. I'm not making this up. This could come out of only a mad comic. But it's true. Obama's EPA is targeting greenhouse gas emissions from commercial aircraft. The idiot moron psychopaths, the college girls, will restrict greenhouse gas emissions from commercial jets, the latest in a long line of steps the dumb house has taken to address so-called climate change. Now, if they would begin by limiting greenhouse gas emissions from the gangsters Air Force One, Air Force Two and Air Force Three, I would say, okay, then there's some validity to it. If Al Capone's plane, if Al Capone's personal plane were to, let's say, fly on uh, banana peels, or something to that effect, I would say, okay, at least they're not hypocrites. But they're going to restrict greenhouse gas emissions from your jets? How are they going to do that? The so-called EPA, the bullies in the EPA, the idiots in the EPA, will begin crafting standards and expects to formally adopt them early next year. You see, U.S. aircraft account for about 11% of greenhouse gas emissions, the agency said. And so they want to impose restrictions on the air craft sector. I think they ought to apply it to our fighter jets, frankly, first, because the fighter jets are terrible emitters. I mean, if you've been on an aircraft carrier and watched those FA-18 Hornets take off and land, I mean, you see the, the, the flame shooting out of the back of that plane. Do you realize what that's doing to the environment? And while you're at it, you ought to restrict greenhouse gas emissions from guns. I mean, there's probably not a greater greenhouse gas uh, emitter than a gun. Think every time a cop fires a bullet on a target range every time one of our uh, soldiers or marines learns how to shoot a rifle aren't they destroying the environment think of that the waste of energy and think of what could be done there if only one of the cockamamie crazy lawyers unleashed himself on the courts this is an example of bullying not only bullying but insane bullies you know there used to be an old phrase the inmates are running the asylum in this case they're bullying inmates running the american asylum these are not just inmates that you can laugh at. These are very dangerous, drug-addicted inmates who are bullying everyone in sight. They are dangerous, drug-addicted bullies, and they're bullying everybody with threats of lawsuits. So Air Force One that takes them golfing or Michelle on vacation, I think that that should be reined in. See, this administration is using EPA and his other fascist agencies to destroy one industry at a time. They want to take down one industry at a time. Now, you're worried about greenhouse gas emissions. Then why did Air Force One and Air Force Two be used last year because Michelle wanted to fly on a different plane as her husband? How about that for a greenhouse gas emission? 
Michelle and her entourage on Air Force One. Obama on Air Force Two. Why? Why? Tell me why. How about the fleet that Congress uses to jet around the world? How about Nancy Pelosi's use of military jets? Yeah, okay, you get the picture. It's the mother of all shakedowns. It is the largest theft of wealth the world will ever have seen because they're bullies. Every day we read of radical Islamics, radical Muslims, radical Hispanics filing lawsuits, demanding things they're not entitled to. College students with undocumented parents file suit claiming South Carolina, denying them scholarships and in-state tuition. You hear this one? And who is filing a lawsuit for them? None other than the criminal Southern Poverty Law Center. The Southern Poverty Law Center is a domestic legal terrorist group, in my estimation. And if there was a true Republican majority, they'd be investigated and closed down as an anti-American front group. That's right. You heard me. Well, another study coming out of San Francisco, the land of uh, diversity. All we hear about in San Francisco is diversity. You can't walk down the streets without puking. It smells of fecal matter and urine wherever you go. That's what the Democrat socialist machine has done to this beautiful city. They have let the filthy bums crap in the bushes and pee in the streets. And the cops have been rendered powerless in San Francisco by the liberal vermin who are ripping the city off, robbing it blind, all the while using the homeless bums as their street thugs to intimidate the population and keep the police off their backs. To keep the police off the backs of the rotten, corrupt politicians, they run the homeless at you. They let them urinate in the streets. They let them defecate in the bushes. I went there the other day, almost threw up. But guess what's coming? A new study says San Francisco will be lily white in 25 years. That's right. Mr. and Mrs. Diversity, pay attention. Mr. and Mrs. Progressive, you're full of it. According to a new study by the San Francisco Foundation, the city's policies are rapidly ejecting, guess who? Blacks, Latinos, and Asians. And will become a lily white island in a heavily diverse region over the next 25 years. Listen to this. The population of African Americans in San Francisco was 13.4% in 1970. Remember that number. 1970, population of African Americans, 13%. That made blacks the second largest ethnic group compared to whites, which was 75% of the population. But by 2000, because of the communist liberal socialist thieves who run the city, who have run over the city with illegal aliens, Hispanics mainly, blacks' share had fallen to about 8%. So it went from 13%, okay, in 1970, by 2000, because of the socialist communist criminals who are flooding the city with illegal aliens from uh, Mexico mainly, black population was run down to 8%. 8%. By 2013, blacks have been so driven out of the city, they only make up 6% of the city. Whites fell to 50% due to Asians moving up to 34% of the city's residents. But as the city becomes more expensive and more elite, a Asians are moving out. Soaring housing costs, wages that are lagging well behind the cost of living are driving this change. Only the t uh, high wage earners in professional technical services and finance jobs whose incomes more than doubled in the last 35 years will achieve the economic gains necessary to be able to live in San Francisco in 2040. So the SF Foundation predicts over the next 25 years that the percentage of Asian Asians in San Fran will fall from 34% to 28%. And the Latino, which, by the way, is a, a phrase I don't use. The right word is Hispanic. Latino is a socialist phrase. So we'll use the word Hispanic. The Hispanic population will fall from 15% to 12%. And so the result will be whites moving back up from 44% to over 58%. Now, what does that mean? Nothing. It means nothing. That's all, but I thought I, I, I thought I would read it to you for all of you diverse types to celebrate diversity. I've given you some of the ideas that I want to talk about. Bullying by Muslims, bullying by LGBT thugs, bullying by street thugs against the cops, bullying by vermin with law degrees in the ACLU and SPLC, Obama bullying everybody and everything in his way. So we know that he's a fabricator. He's never said an honest thing in his life. That's why he was selected, handpicked by the rich, powerful white liberals in Honolulu to become president. He wouldn't be the first liar in the president's office, nor will he be the last.
But this is a special case because America is being taken apart at the joints, and a ninth century army is committing atrocities across the Middle East, and we're sitting here watching this. So I allege that America, you, the American people, have enabled ISIS to commit its atrocities. I say you because if you're gay and you don't speak out against Obama's uh, cooperation with their rampage against individuals in the Middle East, then you're cooperating with throwing gays off roofs. I say you, the feminists, because if you're not saying a word about the kidnap uh, and rape and enslavement of young girls and women, then you are, in essence, the good Germans of today. That's what I said in the first hour. And I frankly believe it, or I wouldn't have said it. And so when Obama says we don't have a strategy, you know he does have a strategy, which is to cooperate with ISIS behind the scenes. I mean, what is the strategy? Think about it. Does he really want to kill people and rape and murder? Of course not. That's not what I'm saying. They're using this factotum army, which is Saddam's former army, by the way, which I saw from the get-go. This is an army run by the old uh, Republican Guard under Saddam, who uh, was let to stand. This is the old Saddam army, now raging across the Middle East. It's far more virulent uh, than it was under Saddam Hussein because it has no opponents right now, and it's being enabled by the United States and Israel, in my estimation. And so it's, in that way, it's more dangerous. There are no controls over it at all. And what's even more interesting is that Saddam Hussein protected the Christian minority community in Iraq, while these throwbacks are decimating Christian communities, Anazidi communities, etc. I don't understand how you can't see what this means to you. And so we're talking about that. The uh, con man in chief says that we don't have a complete strategy in Iraq. They ask the great man who was busy smoking a cigarette or eating Nicorette, whatever he was doing, uh, the amazing vanishing president, what's his strategy? He says, well, we don't have one yet. It's up to the Pentagon. We heard that yesterday. Now, here's the commander in chief passing the buck, or it's either the Pentagon or the Iraqi army isn't ready. Can you imagine if he had been the supreme allied commander and on the day of D-Day, uh, the waves kicked up and the storms brewed, and he would have gone brewed in the back room somewhere and said, well, brooded in the back room and said, you know what, we don't really have a strategy for it, uh, Normandy. It's really the weather. It's because of global warming we don't have a strategy to defeat Hitler. Or the generals aren't ready. Or the uh, partisans aren't ready. That's what you have in the White House. I want to talk about the blood of the Christians and the blood of the Yazidis and the rape of the young girls in the Middle East being on your hands. I want to tell you that you are the new good Germans. You Americans are the good Germans. Republican, Democrat, independent, gay, lesbian, straight, black, white, Hispanic. I don't care what your race is. It doesn't matter what your religion is. We are now the good Germans. We are letting, we are letting this happen. I was the first one in the entire world media to point out two weeks ago when ISIS took Ramadi and they did a victory parade of a half mile long of their Toyota trucks with machine guns and Obama, the smoker, did not launch one airplane at them, not one fighter jet, not one rocket. So I said, this proves to me one thing. We're not only not fighting them, they are us. They're our factotum army. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from. You're listening to The Savage Nation with Michael Savage. Coming up tomorrow at 5, it's the KSFO Morning Show on Hot Talk 560 KSFO. I want to go back to the bigger picture, the positive picture, which is how do you cope with the liberal meltdown of our nation? Because melting down it is. I mean, make no mistake about it. We elected these vermin called Republicans. They're worse than Democrats. Not all of them. I told you, Senator Cotton, I'd vote for him. I'd work for him. Look what they did to him. Look what they did to the real military veterans who we elected. They put them at the back of the bus. That's what the Republican establishment really is, pure, unadulterated, greedy, evil. So how do you cope with it? You don't know what to do. We're between elections. People have tuned out of politics. They don't care right now. People don't understand. What do I mean? They're not listening to talk radio for political views. They're not really listening for political information. What, Hillary Clinton, that old hag, you care about what she says or doesn't say? 
She's going to say something new? Is there anything new under the sun that you haven't heard uttered from her? What could she say that you haven't heard already? She's evil incarnate. What more do you need to know? So who cares about 20 scene right now? Then you've got the rotating clown show on the Republican side. Some good men, yeah, but they're neutralizing each other. It's sad to watch, but that's what's happening. Notice that the Democrats aren't neutralizing each other. Other than this, this clown from the Lower East Side of New York, the deli man, Bernie Sanders. The deli operator. All he needs is a dirty, bloody apron with his accent and his delivery. So he goes to Rubes in North Dakota and tells him that he wants fairness, and they applaud him. 300 people, and right in the New York Times cover. Huge crowds, 300 people. If I had 5,000 people, which I did many times, they may believe it didn't exist. C-SPAN wouldn't cover any of my compassionate conservative events. Well, guess what? I'm here and they're there. Where's Brian Lamb now that you don't need him? I out-survived all of them. Nevertheless, I want to come back to this issue of fighting back. We are the majority. Those of you who listen to this show religiously, and I emphasize the word religiously, we are the majority of this nation. And I am telling you, you can change the course of human events whether it be sitting in a restaurant and talking about the liar in the White House and what the left is doing to America and how he's selling us down the river, about talking about bringing in unscreened Muslims from Syria. Don't be afraid to say it. What is someone to do? Look at you wrong? Let them look at you wrong. They don't know what the hell they're talking about anyway, most people. They're idiots. If you could repeat the reality of what this devil is doing to us over and over again, I am telling you we can change the course of human events. We cannot let this evil man in the White House get away with this anymore. When he is now revising what he is doing with lies such as one of my core principles is to never divide people, when he is the most divisive evil man in the history of the presidency, everyone with a brain knows that, his entire modus operandi has been divide and conquer. He learned it in the Sololinsky School of Community Organization. You create dissension. You stir up hatred between the races. You stir up hatred between the classes. And then you use them to get what you want. This is how this character got where he is. He identifies with the poor blacks in Baltimore. What's even more pathetic about that, in addition to targeting white policemen unfairly and bringing down a decimation of law and order across America, intimidating the police like that, what's even more ironic about all of this Barack Obama's father was African-African. He was from Kenya. He never suffered from the stings, even generations later, of slavery. Never. So where does this con man shyster get the nerve to make believe that he has suffered from white privilege, he has suffered from the stings of slavery? Where did he get that from? It's not even in this gene pool. Africans come here, they don't even talk about it because... They know it's the freest country on earth. They come usually with very good educations, and they go very far in this country. Where does this character get this from? Where? Look how far he's gotten with the act. Why should he change now? Do you know anyone who changes their act when they've been this successful? No, mail. never. You don't know anyone who changes it. So it's pretty amazing. So what do you do? So someone says to me, depressed, he's sad, he worked his whole life from nothing. He's got everything, and he sees the death of America. He looks ahead of me. He's like, he had the vision to create a great business. And he says, I can look ahead. I can see what's coming. He's injecting like a virus Muslims from Syria into all white communities in America.